The goal of this segment is to dig a little bit more into ODEs and their relationship to dynamical systems. Here's the ODE that we derive for the simple harmonic oscillator, the mass on the spring. It's a second order ODE. The highest order derivative that you see in this equation, right there, is 2. There's a theorem in calculus that says you can transform an nth order ODE into n first order ODEs. This is useful because that's the form that ODE solvers want them in. It's also important because it brings out the connection to state space, trajectories, dynamical landscapes, and so on and so forth. The first step in this procedure is to get that highest order term on the left hand side of the equation by itself like this. Then you define yourself a helper variable like this. The third step is to rewrite the whole equation using the helper variable like this. This is a package of two first order ODEs. It's a 2D ODE system. To emphasize that these two equations are a package, I'm going to rewrite them using vector notation. Notice that there are no derivatives on the right hand side of these equal signs. The whole point of this transformation is to get all of the derivatives by themselves on the left hand side and have the right hand side simply capture the dynamics of the system, that is, how things change depending on the values of the state variables and the parameters. As an aside, vectors and matrices are simply numbers, numbers are called scalars, numbers that travel in packs. Shape matters, the number of rows and columns in a vector or matrix is meaningful. Vectors are just thin matrices, matrices that have one column or one row. Row vectors and column vectors are very different things. Note that the elements of this vector are the two state variables of the simple harmonic oscillator, the position x and the velocity v, which is the first derivative of the position. This vector is called the state vector of this system. Now, the number of state variables, the height of the state vector, the number of axes in the state space, and the order of the original ODE are all two. By the way, if you have only two state variables, you can't be chaotic. Three dimensions is a necessary condition for chaos in continuous time systems, and I'll come back to that. This procedure for transforming an nth order ODE to n first order ODEs is covered in my notes, which again are available on the web page. If the ODE is higher order than two, you need more helper variables. In general, if you have an nth order ODE, you're going to have to define n minus 1 helper variables that are all in a chain, x1 dot equals x2, x2 dot equals x3, and so on and so forth. You may recall from an earlier unit that the solutions to this ODE system looked like this. That is, x was a cosine and v was a sine. That was for the situation where we pulled the mass out this far from its equilibrium position to start and then let it go. If we instead draw this solution in state space, we'll get a circle, like this. Note that this representation de-emphasizes time and brings out the patterns in the relationship between the state variables as well as their evolution. If you were to look from the side at this representation, what you'd see is the sine wave for v. If you looked from the bottom, what you'd see is the sine wave for x. Put together, they make this circle, and what happens is that the point rolls around the circle in this direction, as I've shown the arrow here. This representation may feel a little bit funny at first, but it's extremely powerful. It ties in directly to what an ODE really is, and to how its solutions are generated. To help us dig into this, I'm going to write down the general form for an ODE. This is an nth order ODE system, n first order ODEs, with n state variables, x1, x2, down to xn, and you can stack those up in a state vector that looks like this. Again, the dimension of the system is equal to the number of the state variables, is equal to the number of first order ODEs in the system, is equal to the number of axes in the state space. This system defines a vector field. For every value of x, that is, a point on the state space, it tells you what x dot is. That is, it tells you the slope. Given any point on the state space, it tells you what, what direction is downhill. This is easy to think about in two dimensions using the metaphor of a landscape, so we'll go back to the simple harmonic oscillator to play with that idea. 
Here I've made the assumption again that k equals m equals 1 and g equals 0 to make this very easy to play with. The axes of the state space, as always, are the state variables here, x and v. Now, look at these equations. If we are at the point x equals 0, v equals 0, what does the ODE tell us that x dot and v dot are? Well, you just plug in. That means that the slope of the landscape is 0. A ball placed there on that landscape won't move. That is the definition of a fixed point of the dynamics. Let's look at a different point. At this point, the derivatives are x dot equals 0 and v dot equals minus 1. That means that the landscape is flat in the east-west direction, that's this zero right here, but it's sloping down in the north-south direction, up and down. And what that means is that the fall line, concept that those of you who ski will be familiar with, points this way. The fall line is exactly the direction that's maximally downhill. I'm going to draw in a few other points. Now step back and think about this plot again. What it's telling you is, for every point on this landscape, which way it's downhill and how steep that downhill is. The solution is where a ball will roll from a given point, called the initial condition, along that landscape. And going back to the solution of the simple harmonic oscillator ODEs that we did before, that circle, the trajectory of that dynamical system, is simply what happens when a ball follows the slope of that landscape. Note that the derivative vector at every point is tangent to the solution. That's the definition of following the slope. And now that I've showed you this system of first order ODEs representation, I can circle back around to matrices and eigenvectors and stable and unstable manifolds. When I talked about that in unit three of this course, I said that matrices capture how a ball rolls on a dynamical landscape. And I emphasized that that statement is completely true everywhere if the landscape is defined by a linear ODE. Remember the bowls and the saddles? but that the matrix is only a good description locally if the system is nonlinear. A 2D linear system of ODEs looks like this. You can rewrite that system like this if x is the state vector and a is the 2 by 2 matrix containing the coefficients. And that's exactly what I mean by capturing how the system evolves. The matrix is the dynamics. If the system is nonlinear, you can't write the ODE system in matrix form. That is, you can't write down and have only numbers in A. That's the same thing as saying that nonlinear systems don't have any products, powers, or transcendentals involving the state variables. Because if any of those things are true, then you can't write down the system with only numbers in the matrix A. You can linearize nonlinear ODEs, at least the ones that we'll discuss in this course. That involves partial derivatives and produces a matrix called the Jacobian. These ideas will come back in Unit 6. The quiz solution videos for this unit, Unit 5, have an example if you're interested right now. How to think about this? This Jacobian matrix is a local linear approximation of the nonlinear landscape, and its eigenvalues and eigenvectors tell you what kind of linear landscape, a bowl, a saddle, etc., is a good fit to that small patch of the complicated landscape right near where the Jacobian is computed.